Okay, everyone. Um, I am really happy to uh, introduce Nicholas Tolloway, and he's going to tell you about an amazing story about um, uh, one million kids and the micro bit. So please give a big hand for Nicholas. Thank you. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, EuroPython. Um, so, uh, my name is Nicholas, and it's a great pleasure to be talking to you uh, this afternoon. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm a classically trained musician. This is what I used to do. I'm a tuba player. Uh, I'm also a philosophy graduate, and I also write books for O'Reilly, mainly. And in a previous life, I used to be a school teacher, and this is me on my first day as a fully qualified teacher with my new form. And these were a bunch of 11-year-old children in what in the UK we call year seven. So year seven is when you turn from 11 to 12 years old. Uh, can you spot the only person who is uh, ignoring the dress code of wearing a tie at the school? I never wore a tie at that school. And at the very end, they didn't buy me a tie when I left either. So, so I'm not the only person who's spoken at EuroPython about education. Um, I'm sure you remember, this is my friend Carrie Ann, who uh, gave a barnstorming uh, keynote last year about Python in education. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is that she's wearing, but she appears to be very pleased about it. So um, I believe it's a helmet with Raspberry Pis on it. Maybe it's sort of some brainwave device. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I hope you can remember what it is that Carrie Ann said at the very end of her talk. And then thirdly, I think everyone should read this book. It's called Python in Education by Nicholas Tolloway, who is here. Um, it's a really small book. I believe it's free. Uh, it's an O'Reilly book anyway, so you all got a voucher, so you should just go and get this even if it's not free, and you should read it, because it really does help explain about Python in education. And so this is all due uh, for next year, so make sure you write this in your diaries and your planners. I will be checking. So, she set some homework, and I hope you've done it, because I'm here to collect it for her and take it back to the UK so she can give it a mark. Actually, no, I'm not. Um, actually, I'm here to tell you a story um, about how since about this time last year, uh, the UK's Python community has stepped up and worked with the BBC and other organizations to deliver an educational project. But uh, before I explain what that project is, I want to give you um, some history. So this is my first computer. It's a BBC microcomputer. Um, and in the 1980s, uh, every school in the UK got one of these. And um, my father was a head teacher. And so I was, I don't know, seven or eight years old, um, about as old as my son, who's sat over there. Um, and my dad brought it home, um, wanting to learn how to use this so he could use it in school. And it took my brother and I about half an hour to uh, figure out um, what the computer was going to do. So this is a simulation of a BBC Micro, and I'm going to have to program this uh, looking over my shoulder. I hope you uh, forgive the typos and things. Um, so I remember my first computer program. It was this. BBC Basic. <laughs> what goes on line 30? Go to 20, yes, okay. Ha <laughs> ha! I've insulted you all, there we go. So, um, David Allen, who was the project producer, explained that uh, the aim was to democratize computing, and we didn't want people to be controlled by technology, uh, but to control it. And for the sort of eight-year-old me, this was a moment, a revelation. I could, um, I could tell people that they're an idiot automatically with a computer. This was awesome. And I suspect that you guys have all had a very similar experience where one day you were typing something into a computer and you made it do something and you thought, yes, this is great. I can make a computer do a wonderful thing. And there's a sense of um, not just power, but the fact that you can explore what this thing can do, what remarkable things it can do. So fast forward to today and the BBC want to get back into the education space and help in the UK. And uh, they created something called the Microbit Project. And uh, this is the trailer that they've been showing on BBC TV over the summer. 
In the future, hover shoes, flip button, hologram of your nan comes up. She also like a map in front of you. Inside the fabric is Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that gives me an idea. You know her shoes? Trampoline shoes, shoes that, that would hover. hover. That is rubbish. <laughs> So you read that right. At this moment in time, one million of these small computing devices have been handed out to this year's year sevens in the UK, the 11 year olds, right? The kids in my form. And the aim is to rekindle that sense of wonder in computing and uh, to, to sort of foster a can do um, attitude with computing rather than becoming consumers of technology and not asking what this technology can do. So we sort of cherish creativity and exploration over rote learning and, and tests and things. So how was this delivered? Well, I can stand up now because I don't need to type. Um, the BBC got together with a bunch of partners, some of whom are listed here. Um, they range from big multinationals like Arm and Microsoft down to uh, community sort of projects like the, the, the Co Club and, uh, and uh, universities like Lancaster University who did an awful lot of work for this. Um, and also the Python Software Foundation. I'm a PSF fellow, and when I heard about this project, uh, I asked the board whether it would be appropriate for me to uh, contact the BBC and say the BBC would like to be a partner. And they said yes, and we were kind of accepted on the program because the BBC said that they would like to use Python with this device. Python is but one of four languages that this device supports, but obviously I'm going to talk to you about Python, this being EuroPython. Um, so when this device was announced, and here's the, the press release here, um, the PSF were just going to be education partners. We were only going to provide uh, educational resources. And somebody else was going to provide the Python runtime, as it were. Um, and then, I don't know, about this time last year, the BBC got in touch with me and said, the person who's going to do Python uh, has dropped out. Um, and we need Python on the micro bit. Can you help out? Hmm. So I was in a bit of a pickle there. But um, I met somebody called uh, Johnny from Arm. That's how he introduced himself. Hello, I'm Johnny from Arm. It's a strange surname. Anyway, he, <laughs> he lived next door to a chap called Damien George. Um, Johnny is the person who designed the hardware for the microbit. And Damien, as I'm sure some of you know, created MicroPython. And I'd met Damien at Python UK, so I got in touch with Damien. Um, and Damien got hold of uh, one of these devices and uh, we've got MicroPython to run on the microbit, which is remarkable. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about MicroPython. Um, so Damien is actually a physicist, and he, uh, he created MicroPython as a sort of a side project. Um, and uh, it's rather a remarkable side project if you think about it. Hmm, what shall I do? I know, I'll re-implement Python 3, but for microcontrollers. So we have a complete re-implementation of Python 3 running on microcontrollers. It's a remarkable achievement, and Damien is an outstandingly um, talented developer. Um, he ran an extraordinarily successful Kickstarter um, where he, he raised enough money to actually get, uh, get MicroPython out into the world on, on something called a Pi board. Um, like I said, it's a full re-implementation of Python 3. Um, it runs on lots of different sorts of microcontroller-based hardware. Um, there's a flourishing community. And uh, it's a sort of a testament, really, to Damien's talent um, and determination that MicroPython is the success that it is. And we have it running on one of these devices. The other thing the BBC wanted us to do was pr to provide a code editor for children to use. So this is an online code editor that I wrote. It's a JavaScript-based uh, affair. And kids go to the website, the BBC website. They choose one of the four languages. They type in whatever their code is. And they click the download button. They get a hex file that they copy onto the device. And then the program runs. Okay, um, But we discovered when we were testing this with teachers and students in the autumn um, that actually what we needed to do was build a whole ecosystem around this remarkable device. So uh, Damien and I met in London just before we went to a meeting to the, uh, for a meeting to the BBC over a cup of coffee, um, and we drew up what we saw our vision of this ecosystem to be. Um, bear in mind that we're all volunteering our time here. As well, so this is all uh, all about motivating a community to get involved too. So you've kind of got Touch Develop, which is Microsoft's offering, into which we slotted that web-based Python editor. Um, but we people were telling us that actually they prefer writing code in a proper editor, as it were, an editor that they could use on their desktop rather than having to go online. Um, and also, they wanted to choose which editor they wanted to use, um, and they wanted to go to a site where they could. Um, 
uh, where they could um, uh, find out more about specifically Python. So we needed a cross-platform native editor. We needed tools for the command line so you could flash the device um, without having to use the specialist editor. Uh, we needed projects to inspire others as well, and we needed a website to sort of spread the Python and education word. So we got to work. This is Mu. Uh, you'll maybe get the joke. Um, it's a very small, simple Python editor for children. Currently, it's aimed just at, uh, at uh, the micro bit, but we have plans to make it available for other sorts of types of Python development. Um, and uh, uh, so what you will see is when I'm doing the live code uh, demo in a minute, um, I'll be using Mu to make that happen. Whoa. Um, so I also want to mention that while Mu is, uh, the whole philosophy of Mu is that you have sort of zero effort to get you to where you need to be. It's the simplest possible editor. Kids get coding straight away and there's no impediment to them. Um, this is part of a wider movement that's going on in the UK, um, uh, started by Dan Pope, um, which uh, you can hear a talk about this later on. Dan created a, a project called Pi Game Zero. So this is an API that sits on top of Pi Game um, for children. So again, it's a zero effort. You should be able to write a game um, with little or no uh, upfront uh, boilerplate. Um, we have GPIO Zero by Ben Nuttall from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, a similar sort of project uh, for the uh, GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi. We have Network Zero as well, um, which is um, from my friend called Tim, um, which is based upon Zero MQ. Again, it's a very thin wrapper on the top, but it's child friendly. So we're asking ourselves, what other things could we zero as well? Um, maybe you can put your thinking hats on and come up with something, something else, zero, um, that's a child-friendly um, uh, library for kids to use. Um, so the, the, the summary is, it's a child, simple, friendly, simple child-friendly API on top of real modules. Um, remember, I mentioned tooling. So this is uh, MicroFlash. Uh, which is a command line tool and a module that you can use to interact with the device. It will detect where your device is, and you can use it to flash your script, so you can write your script in whatever editor you want. You use it to flash your script onto the device, um, so you have the freedom to choose whatever tools that you want. You just use MicroFlash uh, to, to do it yourself. Um, now, most of the work on MicroPython on the microbit was done on one single device. Uh, uh, which Damien had, and the, uh, the BBC gave the PSF five more, and we wanted to know how are we going to engage with the community so that they produce resources that are inspiring to children, that will get people interested in this. And so um, we did a world tour, and uh, the micro bit went all over the place. Uh, the South Pole, it got sent with the British Antarctic Survey down to the South Pole, to Australia, to the US, all around Europe. Um, and uh, we, we got rather a lot of really cool projects out of it. Now, Radomir um, from Poland uh, created a robot, uh, which I was going to show you a video of, but uh, this morning, actually, Radomir turned up and he said, have you seen this? And uh, this is his little microbit robot that he's, he's improved, and I'm going to put it on the table here, and I'm going to flick a switch at the back, and we'll just have to see what happens. <laughs> ah! Ah! Okay, so, <laughs> well done, Radomir, wherever he is. The important thing is that it's the micro bit that's controlling this, that's controlling the motors here. There's the GPIO pins here. If you look very carefully, there are bolts here that are, um, are making the connections with the, uh, with the, with the motors. Um, and with the help and support of the Python Software Foundation, we, um, create, we are in the process of creating a pythonineducation.org website. This is the initial design for the homepage, and I hope that some of you consider helping out with it, uh, because we want to put all the resources that we create for not just the micro bit, but for Raspberry Pi and all the other amazing Python in education things that are happening around the world in a single place so people can, um, can be inspired and reuse these resources. So this is demo time. <laughs> you don't know how nervous I feel now. <laughs> so the problem with having a micro bit is that I can't really hold it up and you're going, yep, you can see it at the back. So I'm going to hold it up like this and give you um, a quick tour of the hardware. So on the front are 555 
uh, LED matrix, so these flash. Uh, you can have uh, zero to nine in brightness, a couple of buttons for input. Across the bottom are GPIO pins, some of which are big enough that you can attach crocodile clips. Um, on the back, you can see that this is where a battery goes. That's the reset button, micro USB ports. Uh, here is um, a radio, so that you can um, communicate wirelessly with, uh, with devices. Um, if you're reading carefully, you'll see that the processor is here, and there's a compass and accelerometer here as well, so it knows uh, what way it's facing and which way north is as well. Okay, so that's the uh, that's an overview of the hardware. Um, this is Mu. Sorry, that is Mu. <laughs> and I'm going to have to code over my shoulder. So here's one I prepared earlier. This is the simplest possible. Um, uh, script, hello world, and I flash the device. And at the back, you can see I've got an LED flashing to say, okay, there's communication happening. And if I do test tubes, hello world, hey, it works. Just fancy that. Okay. We, can't, we don't have to just scroll text, we can do animation as well. So at display.show, um, we've got some built-in images. All clocks is, an, uh, is a list of all the kind of uh, ranges of a clock ha uh, hand. Uh, and uh, it's going to uh, be 100 milliseconds between each frame of the animation. And I wanted to just keep looping. You can see this is very, very simple code that we hope kids are going to understand intuitively. So let's go back. little radar there we've got going, okay? So it's gonna just keep doing that until I tell it to stop. Um, a bit more advanced example, some more of the built-in images we've got going on here, but in not very many lines of Python, I'm choosing X and Y on the uh, LED matrix. I'm setting a random br uh, brightness. I'm going to set that pixel. Uh, if button A was pressed, this is starting to sound like pseudocode. We've taken a lot of effort to make sure that the API that the kids use to interact with the microbit is very, very simple. Uh, just to show a random image from this list here. Um, if button B was pressed, scroll hello world. Accelerometer was gesture shake, okay? Show an angry face. Let's see what happens when I do this. I press button A, oh, we get a smiley face. A face with his tongue out. A rabbit. Oh, a Pac-Man ghost. And so on and so on. Uh, scroll, and uh, if I press button B, we get our Hello World program. So you can see there's a bit of continuity in the code that we've developed here. Okay, flashing, shake it. <laughs> Do it again. You want to see an angry micro bit? Just shake it. <laughs> okay, but wait, there's more, you're quite right. So, this is the REPL. This is Python running on the micro bit. So, display clear. And um, what I can do is, I used to be a musician, okay? And so what I love doing is making music a part of what I do. And so uh, by plugging in a speaker, I should be able to make it play music. Again, over my shoulder. So import music, nice and obvious. Music dot play, music dot, we have tab completion by the way. What's in the music module? Okay, somebody pick a tune. I can't hear all of you. Wow. No, no, no. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Wah, 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 wah. Should be. Sad trombone. Okay. I can also do this. Okay. Whoops. 440. So if you're a musician like me, uh, 440 is the international standard for a concert A. So I'm going to play it for one second at that pitch. Okay, that's what 
the oboe players for tuning an orchestra. But I can start to do interesting things like this. So from micro bits to chord star, yes, I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> well, whoops, while true, I'm trying to type here without looking at this thing I'm typing, while true. So I want music dot pitch. I want a pitch. What can I get it? Let's get it from the accelerometer. Dot get x, and if I do that for 20 milliseconds. So that's the strangled cat. <laughs> and imagine, if you will, a room full of 11-year-olds on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> so I've made a very simple musical instrument, OK? I need to mention now Mark Shannon. Mark is a uh, contributor to the Python. Um, uh, he's a Python core developer-ish. Um, and uh, Mark has done amazing work helping with this. And one of the things I'm going to show you now is something that Mark has contributed to the project. Mark did the display work for us, by the way. But um, Let me just reset this um, like that. What I'm going to do now is try and show you a musical performance. We have a speech synthesizer. I can't imagine what children will get this device saying within the first five minutes. <laughs> the important thing is, is that it's inspiring them, that they go, well, how on earth can I get this thing to do uh, more? I've made it say something, okay? So uh, the next thing I want to show you, whoops, is sing.py. Um, and uh, oh, I've put it into the wrong mic a bit. And this is going to be a recreation of uh, the sound of music. And so if I flash the device, we should hear some silly micro bits. So, <laughs> that's like the Dalek's best hits, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, ah, it's smiling. Good. So, I have micro bit one, it's smiling. And over here, I have micro bit two, that are also smiling. Uh, I need to switch on the speaker and turn up the volume because somebody sarcastically shouted out the European national anthem just a moment ago. These devices can communicate wirelessly. Yeah. I am going to flash onto here a script called um, Conductor. And all it does is send a signal with the string go in it. And these devices have, uh, I've programmed them so that, ah, it's ready, it's smiling at me, uh, that they will sing uh, Beethoven's Ode to Joy for you. Um, this is totally unrehearsed, let's hope it works. No, there's only one of them was working. We only got the harmony. It's got to be right, this. Let me reset. It's ready. Maybe it didn't connect. Let's see. Okay, in German, of course. <laughs> so, 
So, I'm going to have to hurry up. Uh, so, what has education got to do with you? Um, I was having a discussion with some people on Facebook, and this is what I said when they said, why have we got to invest in education? Uh, well, asking what sort of education and learning our community supports is how we decide what sort of community we become. Uh, for it is through education and learning that we engage with our future colleagues, friends, and supporters. This is very, very important, okay? And we need help, so I'm asking for help. We need help with the editor, with all the zeros, with the website, and with the placeful resources as well, and other cool stuff. We have a Jupyter um, notebook for microbit as well in the works. And I'm very, very pleased to announce uh, that this week, um, everything to do with the BBC microbit project is going to be open sourced by the BBC. That includes the hardware and the software. Thanks to the BBC. <laughs> Thanks to the BBC. Everybody who attends EuroPython and has one of these tickets will get a micro bit for you to play with. If you would like to learn more about uh, a bit more technical information about the micro bit, I'm going to be speaking in here in about two minutes' time um, uh, after this keynote. Um, I was going to say, are there any questions? But you can ask me at the end of the next thing if you want to ask me questions. That's it. Finished. Done. Yeah. <laughs>